Class A, B and C. Just give us a rough idea of what that relates to in terms of the skill level that, that we see in the ring. It's basically experience and the number of bouts you've had. So Class A will be basically open class. Elite can have as many bouts as you want. It's going to be over a certain number, I think 20 in this tournament. And then the lower classes will be, be under 20. Um, you know, and see less experience than that. And it does make a big difference. There's actually, you know, quite a steep learning curve when you go beyond five bouts to 10 bouts. And when you get to 20, you are, you know, considerably more experienced. There's so many things that you can only pick up when you're in the ring, boxing really in a competitive contest. Even sparring replicates it. But you learn so much more from the bouts itself that there are, there's a marked difference between boxers who have had 20 or 40 bouts. So there's some very experienced boxers in this tournament. And some of the top internationals, the kind of boxers you'll see at the Olympic Games, these are people who have had hundreds of bouts. And two young men, at the more experienced end of the youth category. Kane Corby in the red corner, those sky blue shorts, the red vest. James, George James Jago from Ring in Bracknell with the white vest, white shorts, and the blue head guard. Really, some really. Uh, Solid shots being thrown in here, and both men meeting in the centre of the ring. Neither too keen to move on to the back foot as of yet, John. No, no. And Jago's club ring is a new gym, actually. Quite recently founded, but it's already been churning out champions. Whereas Earlsfield, Albies gym, has a much longer history and is very well established in London. The sort of interesting duel between the two different gyms as well. Well, it's an aggressive start from both young men. Corby leads with the right and puts the left hand on the back of it. Almost from a, a switch hitting southpaw stance, that was. It was interesting. Through the right as a lead, but then almost through the left as a, as a backhand. The way he pulled it up. It's a good sign. He's been, he's been putting weight into his punches. The ones that have landed, even the jabs, have landed hard. Driving Jago back. I say he's uh, man. It really has got to be driven back. Jago. This is the first time really we've seen him move and he's back to the ropes. That was a nice right hand from Kane Corby. There wasn't much to separate them in the early part of the round. And just as this one's began to progress, Corby has certainly been the boss of two of the exchanges and managed to back his man up first. I don't know how much there is into that to be read into, but. Good start from both men. And Kane Corby will go back to his, I'm sure. Maybe perhaps a little bit happier than George Jago. Yeah, but Jago was still quite often meeting him punch for punch. And both seems a bit of speed and power. Absolutely, certainly a noticeable difference in power sitting ringside compared to the last one and really only going up eight kilos which is a lot really in layman's terms which is in boxing terms it is quite a quite a big step yeah I think so there's a you know as you move up through the weights obviously you start seeing more you tend to you tend to expect more power to come in as they go up in size and the speeds go down tentative opening to the second before the action explodes into into life raiding tactics from both boxes here just taking their time and kind of punch at the same time as each other that was a nice combination from Jago Corby's met with a combination from the ring man and every now and again, Corby sort of screwed in his backhand, his right hand. And that means he sort of snuck that through Jago's guard. And that could be quite a useful weapon for him. Some nice work on the inside from Corby as well. 
short uppercut, jab to the body. Some good variety early. There's been a better start as well from George Jago, so heating up nicely this one. Jago just looks towards the referee as uh, Corby holds on. Nice right hand over the top from Kane Corby, throwing that one over the jab. And both boxers having little spells of success in the second round. Absolutely, yeah. So every time Corby sort of lands one of those nice eye catching right hands, Jay goes right there coming back at him. Second round of the third of some 20 bouts, 20 finals this afternoon in Ring 8. Here in Great Hall in Alexandra Palace. One round between either Kane Corby or George Jago and Haringey Box Cup gold medal. And certainly not, not a great deal to pick between these two. That second round was... Real back and forth. And we feel that everything rides on a good last round for one of these two men if we are to go to the scorecards. Yeah, you think Corbyn might be the more confident after the second round? I think he's sort of might be finding his timing a little bit more, but you'd have to make sure of it in the third. Well, that's on the bottom left there. One. Last pep talk from Kane Corby's corner man. Who can produce the goods in these final three minutes? A nice couple of lead right hands to Corby, but then Jago responds with two hooks to the head to even things out. Both men poised, ready to pounce. And Corby spinning his man onto the ropes with a little bit too much gusto and protest from the corner of. George Jago have led to the referee to just have a word with the man in the red corner. You sometimes get that when both boxes are really going for it, so sort of, you know, upping their work rate, charging in, trying to you know, catch the eye in the final round. They can sort of just crash into each other and end up in a few more clinches than we've seen before. So it gets a bit untidy. The, uh, the right eye of... And Corby, just a little bit of swelling there. I'm not sure whether that's from the general competition over the last couple of days. Well, the left eye, I beg your pardon. So one of those right hands from Jago has got through and landed, causing a little bit of swelling. You see that one starting to close up a little bit now, John, and it's closed up quite considerably right in front of our very eyes. But good combination lands from Kane Corby. You don't see that too often with the, with the head guard on. It's quite hard to. You know, the glove as well. So obviously, there's some power coming at him from Jago. Yeah, power and accuracy from Jago, and uh, he lands another right again. And clearly, that's a shot that's been working well for him. This thing, if Corby's left eye closes a little bit, might make it a touch harder to see the right hands coming in. And just see as they move over to our commentary position ringside the eye is just watering a little bit there as well I don't think enough at this stage to to be traveling in too much in terms of vision but as you say we're looking at a 12 round contest that could swell up more and more but we are at the end point of that 60 kilo final and nice to see the two lads embrace in the middle and smiles as well they both know that was a good bout it was indeed and I just wonder who has Snuck the judge's decision there. Either way, it's certainly a case to be argued for either boxer in there, really. Yeah, I thought Jago had a strong finish. Could actually all come down to how the judges saw the first round. If you think the second went Corby's way, third might have gone Jago's way. Now 
the bottom of your screen there with his back to you. Just leaning over the desk there, Dan O'Sullivan, one of the organisers of the competition, a member of the Harringay Police Box Club, coach there as well. And one of the uh, organisers this weekend, a busy man indeed. He's going around doing all of the ring announcements this afternoon. And he'll be just having a look at those scores as they're collating. The final decision is made. Nervous times for George Jago there on your screen. Well, I think it was uh, going to be understandable disappointment for whoever didn't get the decision there, really. Both men worthy of being the winner, but of course there can only be one, and Ken Corby was exceptional in that first round. Jago.